up everyone, it's Bigfoot. Today is Tuesday, which means I'll be answering your questions based on the feedback that you guys have given me in my comments on my videos. Now, my first topic comes from MT Mike. He asked, hey, can you do a video about how you dealt with ticks? Absolutely, Mike. Now, before I actually talk about how I personally dealt with ticks on the Appalachian Trail, I wanna cover some facts about ticks and after I cover a few of those things, then we can talk more about the prevention measures, especially what I did on the Appalachian Trail. Well, to start off, let's talk about what ticks actually carry Lyme disease and the ones that you really need to be concerned about. Now, these ones are called deer ticks. They're also known as nymphal ticks. Now, they basically acquire Lyme disease by attaching themselves to a rodent they find in the forest. And this could be your common mouse, maybe even a chipmunk. And what they do is they acquire the disease from this rodent, they detach, and then they transmit this Lyme disease to deer and to us. Now the scary part is that ticks can actually transmit Lyme disease after they have attached to your body in as little as 24 hours. So it's really, really important that you're checking for ticks and that you can avoid having them attached for longer than 24 hours. Although you can find ticks anywhere, they tend to avoid high elevations. I believe I read somewhere about a study that they conducted and it was unlikely that they found ticks above an elevation of about 1,800 feet. So this makes the mid-Atlantic states really, really popular for ticks. And this is probably going to be the area that you're gonna have the highest risk of getting in contact with a deer tick. Now, if you come across a tick, the first thing that you want to do is make sure you try to get it off your body as soon as you can. Now, that's not always going to be able to happen. And the key part here is that you are getting the ticks off of your body before they become attached. Once the tick is attached to your body, they can spread Lyme disease to you in 24 hours. So it's important that you're always checking for ticks. And if you find them, you get them off as soon as possible. Now, the best way to getting a tick off of your body if they become attached is using a fine tweezers and digging into your skin to get the entire body out and detach the entire body. Now, the common symptoms if you do get Lyme disease are first and foremost, the red bullseye that will appear anywhere between three and 30 days after the bite, and it will be around where the area that is infected. Other signs and symptoms include fever, fatigue, headache, and muscle and joint soreness. All right, well, let's go back to MT Mike's question about how I personally dealt with ticks on the trail. So I, first of all, use permethrin, actually this exact permethrin, which is a soy brand, on the trail. And I'll tell you, this is your first line of defense with being able to deter ticks and mosquitoes and all kinds of insects. It's a repellent, but I'll tell you, it did a fabulous job with repelling ticks. What I did was apply this to all of my gear on the back of the box and on the bottle itself, it actually tells you exactly the gear that you wanna apply this to. Uh, this is for treatment for gear, mosquito netting, tents, uh, nets, canopies, screen enclosures, sleeping bags, backpacks, ground cloths, hammocks, and camping chairs. It's not effective on the skin. It should only be applied to fabric only. So before I started my through hike, I applied this to all of my gear and I basically would apply this every month. Now it states on the bottle that you wanna apply this every 42 days or every six wash cycles, whichever comes first. Because I was going through about six wash cycles a month, that's why I applied this every single month. And I will tell you during the entire course of the Appalachian Trail, I only found one tick on me the entire time. So this stuff did a fabulous job. This is also recommended by many ridge runners and trail maintainers and uh, and I don't know why you wouldn't use this stuff. So uh, that's my first line of defense. All right, just a couple notes on the permethrin. When you're applying this, you wanna make sure that you are applying this in an area that's well ventilated. I chose my garage, and if it was sunny out and it wasn't the middle of winter right now, I would be doing this outside with the sun shining, but you wanna make sure that there's not a lot of wind and things like that. But first off, applying this well ventilated area, don't do this indoors. Secondly, you wanna make sure you're applying it about six to eight inches away from your gear. Now I would apply a generous amount on the exterior of all of the fabric of my gear. 
and then I would flip it over after 30 seconds and reapply the other side and just let it sit there and dry for uh, two to four hours. The next thing that I used, and I really only used when I got through just the end of the mid-Atlantic states and into the New England section, was a mosquito spray that had 20 to 30 percent DEET. You don't want to have anything higher than really 30 percent DEET because it will melt some of your gear and plastic. I know some hikers out there that actually use 100 percent DEET and they wreck their sunglasses and parts of their gear. So make sure that you are using only 20 to 30 percent. Now a few other things that I personally did was I make sure that I showered every single time that I got into the town or there are times when you pass by certain areas that have, offer free showers. Uh, I can recall in the mid-Atlantic states especially, there were quite a few places, especially in New York, but it's important that you are showering and staying clean. This will also give you an opportunity to be able to do another tick check. Uh, I got a haircut about midway through my hike somewhere in Pennsylvania, and, uh, and, and I did that, number one, because I was just really, really warm, and number two, I, I wanted to make sure that I could identify when I did have a tick anywhere uh, on my head. So that was something that uh, really was more of a preventative measure for ticks. Now I mentioned that I did my laundry every time I got into town. Now every time I dry my clothes, I did dry them under the high heat setting. And basically I did this to make sure that if there were any ticks on my clothing, that they would die in that cycle. Make sure you check with your gear, that your gear can withstand the high heat cycle. Now the next thing I did was wear the highest sock that I could find. I had the darn tough socks and they basically went up to almost my calves. And I did this because I didn't wear pants very often on the trail. And this was important because when you are trudging through the forest, the ticks are gonna be hanging low on the floor, on plants. And when they do fall on top of you, they are probably likely going to be crawling up from your ankles. And I wanted to make sure that that area was covered so I can identify them and pull them off. Now, if you are wearing pants, that will benefit you because you're gonna have an opportunity to be able to see them better. And they're not gonna be crawling on your skin which means they can't attach to you. Now, if you are wearing long pants, it is recommended to basically tuck the bottom of your pants in your socks. I honestly didn't see this very often, but that is something that the ATC recommends. And then the last thing that I personally did was I brought with me the Z seat, and any time that I would sit anywhere on the trail, I would typically sit on my Z seat. And this basically prevented me from sitting on an area that might be infected with ticks and things of that nature, and just basically was another line of defense between where I was sitting, my butt, and the actual ground where most ticks are crawling. So that was helpful as well. Now, a few other things that you can do that I didn't personally do is number one, buy clothing that's already pre-treated have a pair of fine point tweezers. So in the event that you do have a tick that is attached, you can get the entire body off of you before you get to that 24 hour threshold. And the only other thing that most people are probably not gonna do is really upkeep uh, their beards. Now, most hikers are gonna grow out a really cool through hiking beard like I did. And uh, it's just another area that ticks can get in and kind of infest themselves and if you're not careful, it'd be easy for them to attach somewhere in this area. Now, this all goes without saying that you are constantly checking yourself for ticks. I did this every single day, sometimes a couple times a day, and for sure, I always did this when I got to camp at night after I got in my tent and changed into my town clothes. Because remember, if you can prevent that tick from being attached to your body for 24 hours or less, you'll be able to eliminate the probability of you getting Lyme disease. So it's really important that when you catch them, you catch them early and fast. All right, everyone, that wraps up the prevention measures that I did on the Appalachian Trail and other things that uh, others recommend. I do encourage everyone to do their own research on this topic because it is really important. Now, I did meet hikers on the Appalachian Trail that didn't do any prevention measures. I don't know if they ended up having any issues or not. It was a dry season, so I don't think there was as many ticks out that normal years have. However, I will tell you this, I met one prior through hiker, and his name is Murray. He's actually the owner of the Secret Shelter property in New Jersey, Murray's Secret Shelter. Look it up on Abel's Guide. Now he through hiked the Appalachian Trail back in, I think it was like the 80s or 90s, but uh, sometime in the last 10 or 15 years, he actually acquired Lyme disease and it has affected him so much that he actually can't even hike anymore. And I just think it's really important for you to do things that can prevent this from happening because there's just so many things out there that you can do that really limit your risk of acquiring Lyme disease on the Appalachian Trail. All right, well, that wraps it up, guys. 
Next week, I'm going to do my next topic. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you'd like this topic to be on. I'll choose it sometime later this week. But again, thanks everyone. Stay tuned for my next sighting. And remember to always follow Bigfoot. Thank you.